In the 80s, there were plenty of well-known animated TV series that are still remembered to this day. Everybody talks about G.I. Joe, everybody talks about Transformers, but why doesn't anybody remember Inhumanoids? This was one of my favorite shows as a kid. Seeing this at a young age was simply mind-blowing. It had giant monsters rampaging through cities, army vehicles trying in vain to stop them, zombies, skeleton warriors, tree monsters, rock monsters, and complete chaos. It was far more gruesome than any other children's show. It was created by Hasbro, and like other Hasbro cartoons, it was made to support a line of action figures. As you can see from this commercial, the monsters were huge. I think that was a clever idea to make the monsters and humans in scale with one another. I used to have a bunch of these toys. They were just as awesome as they looked in the commercials, but I've never played with them inside of a cave before. I'm very hard pressed to explain what happens in the show. The question is, what doesn't happen? There's a team of monster fighters known as the Earth Corps who try to save the world from the Inhumanoids, such as Metlar, who's a creature that lives in the center of the Earth and chucks fire. He is the most evil of all 80s cartoon villains and personifies the devil himself. Tendril is a giant plant-like creature who can regenerate severed limbs. Decompose is a prehistoric creature with a dinosaur-like skull who also happens to be undead. Seriously, name another cartoon that has a giant dino zombie that traps people inside its rib cage. And yes, that is the voice of Chris Latta, who also did the voice for Starscream and Cobra Commander. Just by touching people, Decompose has the power to turn them into hideous mutations. Metlar, Tendril, and Decompose are the main villains, but there are many other Inhumanoids. Not all of them work on the same side. Slither is a giant snake creature who's unlocked from an ancient temple and has an old score to settle with Metlar. Then there's elemental creatures who help the Earth Core, like the granites, rocks that change shape, and the redwoods, centuries-old beings that disguise themselves as tree stumps. There's also Magnacore, whose body is made of hardened lava and can split into two beings connected by a polarized magnetic field. There's a blue cyclops creature that hatches from an egg and literally devours all of its siblings. It then goes on to eat everything it sees. What I found most repulsive about this thing is that it happens to have a transparent stomach, so you can actually see its victims being ingested. When I was a kid, I thought this was absolutely disgusting. Then it barfs him out. Yuck! There's also a scene where he bites off the arm of Decompose. Today, they could never, ever show anything like this on a children's show. I'm glad to have grown up in an age when television had some fucking balls. It shocked the hell out of me, it gave me nightmares, it made me want to puke, but I kept coming back for more. Today, it still holds up. The storylines are fast-paced and absurd as hell. There's an overall strong narrative flow with episodes that usually end on cliffhangers. The animation quality is on par with other 80s cartoons, characterized by split screens, cool perspectives, heavy shadows, and apocalyptic scenery with demonic visuals that convey an all-embracing sense of doom. But it was too awesome for its own good. There were only 13 episodes, and not many people seem to know about it. Why didn't this show receive the same level of fanfare as Transformers and G.I. Joe? Why was it buried with the 80s and left for dead? Well, maybe that's for the best. I guess I'd rather not see it made into a live-action CG fest by Michael Bay. Its obscurity only makes it feel more special to me. I'll never forget Inhumanoids.